Okay, uh, let's start with this COCO6. This CO is about counting, counting methods that you can use to compute different things. <clears throat> and this is, I think, chapter six of your book. So, and after that, then we will have only one CO left that would be about graphs. Uh, there is a, there are two options there. Either I can go with the graphs, either I can go with the trees. So graph and trees, both are the things that you will see in your data structure. Have you studied data structure yeah. or not? Yes. And uh, hopefully you must have seen the tree data structure in that, uh, in that course. You already have seen that? Yeah. So tree data structure is already you know. So, so that's why I will focus on graph. But I am also sure that you have the idea of graphs also. So hopefully in the next semester, if this course will come again, I will remove that CO also because that is the part of the data structure. So I have that option to remove. And then we will put some good stuff in all these CEOs because we are exempting at least uh, maybe after, 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 after CO4, uh, we are exempting at least one section from each uh, from each CO. From CO5, we have exempted one section from the book. For CO6, we are again going to exempt something, but it is that repeated, okay? Because uh, there is a topic called permutation and combination, which is in section maybe uh, 6.3. And then it is repeating in section 6.5 and 6.6 uh, .6 maybe, I don't know. So, so due to that repetition, I have kept only that stuff only for once in the slides. But I am skipping. That's why I am just finishing all these COs within each, within each week. But after removal of that CO, then we will uh, further strengthen these CEOs with further good stuff in, in them. Anyhow, moving on. So now this CEO is about counting methods and this would be quite easy, no issue. The most easiest I think uh, is this one, except the last, last portion, which would be maybe uh, what was that? This one, 6.4. This is also easy, but inshallah, I will give you that understanding and then you will, feel, will not feel any difficulty here. But anyhow, <clears throat> so the basics of counting. So now this chapter six is about counting methods. And counting methods are those methods which you can use to compute something, to calculate something. So first we are going to see some basics, the basics, for example, the product rule, and then we will go uh, to in another topic, sum rule. And similarly, we will go for subtraction rule and then the division rule. So these are the basics. So that's why it's, it's easy. So product rule now. <clears throat> when you have some task and that task is, uh, or you can say, if you have one procedure divided into two tasks or many tasks, or you have simply have two or more tasks, okay? I can say that I can give you one work which is divided into tasks or I can say, I can simply give you many tasks to do. So these are the two options, both meaning is same. Some author will, in, in the book, some author will say in that way, other author will say in that way, nothing else. This is the only difference. So if you have two tasks, according to this definition, if you have two tasks, and if there are 
n1 ways to do the task 1 and n2 ways to do the task 2 or second task. So then you can just simply apply this product between them, product between the number of tasks, between uh, product between the number of ways of, of both tasks. And then you have finally the count that how many ways you have for the two tasks. Uh, for the, how many total number of ways you have to compute that those tasks. So this is the simple rule. So that's why it is called product rule. For example, here we have the simple example. And this example is saying that you have 32 microcomputers or you can say you have 32 computers in, in in some computer center or in some computer lab. And then each microcomputer has 24 ports. And in that computer you have, if you will go or look into the back of the casing, then you will have 24 ports in it. So 32 are the number of microcomputers and 24 is the number of ports in each my computer. And then the question is, how many different ports are there to a uh, microcomputer in the center? So you have to calculate. It's a simple. So you have to calculate simply. So simply when you will divide this 32 with 24, then you will have get the total number of, because 32 is the number of computers. So this is the third, fourth, or you can say the second or third class question for, for a student. That if you have 32 computers and one computer can have 24 ports, then you can multiply and then you can find the total number of ports. This is the simple one. And moving on, now you can use the same approach for, for, for further things. For example, here the question is that how many different license plates can be made if each plate contains a sequence of, now the things will go towards something uh, which you normally compute in your real life. It would not be like a simple math question. It, you will use the same approach. You will use the same approach to calculate something. The same approach which you have seen here you will apply the same approach, just a minute. Maybe we can, I don't. So now we will use this simple approach of this multiplication or simple product. We will use that simple approach for a little bit lengthy problem, for a little bit. And here the question is that how many different license plates can be made if each plate contains a sequence of three uppercase English letters, you know that if in your plate that you have on your vehicles, you have some combination of characters and digits. So that is the thing that if each plate contains a sequence tartib, of three uppercase letters, three uppercase English letters, followed by three digits. So then you will have three di digits. First, you will have three uppercase English letters, and then you will have three digits. And digits is from zero to nine, 10 digits you, you can understand. And then English letter, how many total English alphabet? Al alphabet 26. And we are not talking about small letters, only upper. So 26 letters is the option for this one. And 10 is the option for the digit. Now, how many different license plates can be made by using that sequence that you have to first 
you have to first keep three upper case English letters and then three digits. Now the things are not in that way. Now the things are not in that way, which you have seen here very much simple. You have to think properly. You have to think properly. So here you can see this is the this is the position, the first position for three English English letters. And then the rest is the position of the three digits. So here I can write 26 letters, English letters in uppercase. So I have 26 options. And then at the second point, I have again 26 options. Here again, 26 options. Here I have the options for 10 digits from 0 to 9. And similarly and so on. So now what you have to do according to that product, you simply have to multiply them. And then you will have this answer. So this is the total number of possible lessons plates that you can make by using this sequence. By using this sequence. So it is now it is looking very much easy for you. And now, <laughs> example six. In the book, you have more examples like, like that, which I have mentioned at the end of this section that you have to do that one, two, four, nine, similar examples. So now example six, this is about function, but we are in the same topic of product rule. We are in the same topic of product rule. So here the question is how many functions are there from a set with M elements? You have a set with M elements to a set with N elements. So you have one set with M elements, another set with N elements. And then the question is how many functions are there? from that first set to that second set. And normally function is something in which you will assign the value from codomain to the domain. Or I can say in easy words, in which you will assign some value from set B to some element of set A. <clears throat> So, how many, question is how many functions are there for these from this set to that set? And the first set has M elements, second has N elements. <coughs> so now, this is not the answer. This is just an example for you, to, for your understanding. That if you have a set with three elements, and if you have another set with five elements, and you have to calculate that how many functions between them, then you can do like that. Five, raised power three. So this is the second set. This is the first set. And then after calculation, after computation, you will have this answer. Basically it is what? Five option first time, five option second time, five option third time. <laughs> so now, I have one set with M, M elements, another set with N elements. So you have, you have to do what? You have to, you have to look on the set B and you have to take one element and that element must have some connection with the element in set A. This is what I'm using the simple words to give you the understanding. 
So that's why here n which is the size of the second element is written here and then the available elements it it is the set a so if i will take the first then this m elements are available even for the second element of this all m elements are available for third all m elements are available for fourth all m elements are available so now again, for first element of for first element of set B, I have all the elements available. All the elements of set A is available for the first element. All the elements of set A are available for the second element of B. Similarly, all are available for the third and so on. So what it is, what is, this is basically if the size of the second set is what? N, then I can, for the first time I have, for the first time I have N, then again N, then again N, so M times, M times. <laughs> m times or you can say this example here in this example this is this is an example to give you the understanding real understanding and this is general general variables that you can use for any set so here in this example 5 is the size of set b 3 is the size of set a <coughs> And this is what? This is 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5. 5 raised to the power 3 is what? So this is what? 5 multiplied by 5 multiplied by 5. But written in just single form, in combined form, in closed form. So it is written in closed form. So that's why it is not something different from that. It is the same thing. Yes. Can I say it's uh, n? Uh, no, this is function, so that's why you have to take. So you have to read the definition of function. And the definition of function is that for the elements of B, you must have some element from A. So that's why we are thinking in that way, in that direction, according to the definition of the function, because he's asking for the function. He can ask something else. Then the definition will be changed. Then this NM order will be changed according to the question. So that's why this, now you have the understanding why this N is here and why M is here. Okay, now moving on example seven. <clears throat> now counting one to function, one function. And now this is now the definition is changed. One to one function. How many one to one functions are there from a set with m elements? So now we have one set with m elements, another set with n elements. Now we have one set with m elements, another set, our second set with n elements and the question is how many one-to-one -one function maybe here we have the definition for one-to-one -one or I can show you mm -mm. just just a minute So now, here, for one-to-one -one function, if you will just see that, if here we have six elements, and if here we have five elements, then it means that A and B are not one-to-one. -one. If I am saying that if we have six elements here, and maybe five or four elements here, less than this set A, then I cannot assign unique element 
to each element of the setting. Is it true or not? Yes. If this is the situation, then it means, if this is the situation, then it means that this M should be less than or equal to this M. Are you understanding this condition now? Why this condition is written here? Why this condition is written here? This M should not be greater than or equal to N, okay? Should not be greater than N. <clears throat> it must be less than or equal to N. Only then unique assignment is possible. So, so that's why we are saying that let M less than or equal. So we are supposing that M is less than or equal to N. And then we are moving forward. And then suppose the elements in the domain. And now we are supposing that the elements in that domain would be from A1 to AM. So these are the elements of set A with M elements. When you say domain, it is always mean set A. If there are two sets, sets A and set B. And if you say domain, it is always means set elements of set A. And when you will say co-domain, it always means elements of set B. Yeah. Anyhow, so now suppose, because the here we are using not some real numbers, we are using just variables. So that's why we have to answer it in variables generally. So that's why we suppose that this that M should be less than or equal to N first. And then we are supposing that the elements of this first are elements of domain are from A1 to AM. And this M is giving me the idea that the size of the set A is M. And there are N ways to choose the value of the function at A. So for A, I, I can choose, there are N ways. N is the size of the elements of the set B. For element A, I can choose an element of from set B, which has the size M. So that's why N ways are possible to choose a value from the set B for this A1. And value of the function, when you will, when you will select that, value for that a1 then what would be the remaining values n minus initially for set for the first element of set a for a1 a1 is the element of set a and what are the values available in set b according to this question n n elements are available in set b when you have selected the element for from this set B, from these N elements, when you have selected the value for A1, and now you are going to do something for A2, what are the remaining values in set B? N minus 1, because 1 is already selected for the A1. So that's why for A2, we have N minus 1 ways. And similarly, when you will go on like this, then for element a k that would be a k here bit before or maybe the last one whatever it is then the elements would be n minus k plus one how oh, if i have the five elements here for set a and similarly i have i'm just putting dots five elements in b for this element, I have five available. When one is gone, maybe that one. Then for this element, I have four available. When that is gone, then for this element, I have these three available. When that is gone, for this element, I have two available. I have two available. And when that is gone, for last element, I have one available. So that's, if you will put the numbers here, you will get the things like that. 
if n is if n is for example 5 and my k is also the last one now 5 so 5 minus 5 you will have 0 plus 1 one way there is only one way for the last element a k so now I, I i gave you this example that this is correct i gave you this example to show that this is correct anyhow we are just saying that okay for first element this is the number of ways for second this is the number of ways for the last one this is the number of ways now you have the number of ways for all the elements of this set a with m elements now by using that product rule what you can do for the first element you have n other mul multiply with n minus 1 multiply with n minus 2 and so on what will be the last multiplied by with the n minus you now we are replacing this k with m which is hmm? it is just a formula to to calculate the exact value and how you can build that formula by your experience if you are a mathematician, then you will think over it again and again that what variable I will place here to get the correct value generally. So this is how, for example, for recurrence relation in, in your previous uh, chapter, maybe CO5, uh, maybe. So if you, I think that you have not seen the video yet then that recurrence formula how you we are building that formula only by hit and trial only by hit and trial by doing the work again and again and again and then finally you will have that recursive formula that that will give you your objective so now now always you are multiplying all those ways here you are multiplying all those way, ways here which is the answer for this question that how many one-to-one -one functions? So this is the total number of one-to-one -one functions from a set with M elements to a set with N elements. Because this was a general question. And this is just an example. This is not the part of the question, but it is just giving you... I didn't remove that from here because it will give you better idea to understand what this what this is saying and here we have a set with three elements and then we have a set with five elements so we have set a with three elements and set b with five elements here so for the three element set a first we have five options available after that n minus one after that subtracting again so then so these are the ways for the three elements multiply them and you will have this answer one to one function for this example now <laughs> moving to another concept which is summary so product is Something where you have to multiply something and sum is what what you have to sum up the, the number of ways of the task. <laughs> Allah. So, if we have a task and we can perform that task uh, either in N1 ways or in N2 ways, so both options are available, then to calculate the total number of ways, what you have to do, you have to, you can simply just sum them. You can also sum them. N1 plus N2. You can sum them up to find the, what, what is the total number of uh, tasks available. This is also something the formula 
summation formula which you can use for some questions like that which you already did here but here we are using product here you will have that idea that where you have to apply the sum and here the question is are the case study is are the question is that suppose that either a member of the mathematics faculty or a student so now you have the mathematics faculty or a student who is a mathematics major who is studying that mathematics majorly is chosen as a representative to a university committee so you have to form a university committee you have to build a university committee and for that committee you have to choose a mathematics faculty member or a students from mathematics major you have to select that then what how many different choices are there for this representative so that representative can be faculty member, can be a student. So how many different choices are there for this representative? Uh, Numainda is Arabic word or not? Numainda. Hmm? Safir is Arabic word, yeah. Noon, Meem, Alif, Ma, and then, I don't know, Hamza, Noon, Dal, Hey, Numainda. Okay. Mm. It means superior. No, that means representative. <laughs> okay. Safir, we have the Safir word also. I know that this is available in, in Arabic, but it, it is something. It has the same meaning like that, but uh, the direction or objective is something different. Anyhow, how many different choices are there for this representative if there are 37 members of the mathematics faculty members? So now you have 37 faculty members in mathematics and 83 mathematics majors. Here majors means students. Okay, Here 83 students. You have 83 students and 37 members of the uh, mathematics faculty. And no one is both a faculty member and a student. And this sentence is also mentioned here. There is no any person, for example, a faculty member is not a student and a student is not a faculty member. So no any person here, which is sharing both the things, faculty and student, maybe is faculty member in the department as a lecturer and also doing a PhD. So, so he is a student and also a lecturer, so it can happen. But this is something a restriction is given that you have to select that representative from that 37 members of the mathematics faculty and 83 mathematics students and this restriction. So now, this is basically question. How many different choices are available to select that representative? How many different choices are available? So now it's a, so that is just some rule. We are just going to start. So that's why I'm, I just want, this is for you. 37 is the number of faculty members, 83 is the students, you just have to add them up and then you will have your total possible options for that representative. And this restriction is just normally faculty members. I told you that normally faculty member is not a student, student so that is the, no reason, no any confusion. The data that we have is no any faculty member which is also a student that is not the data given here in this question, okay? So you don't have to think in that way. So this restriction is useless. It is just a, just changing your direction so that you will not think too much, <laughs> so that you will do some mistake. Anyhow, and the data which is given here in this whole example, in the question, 
there is no any data which is mentioned that something is lecturer and also doing PhD, no data is available. So you have to do what? You have to simply add them and you will have, can get your answer. Now, we will use this simple formula, which is a sum rule for, for further complicated things. We will use this thing for further complicated things. <clears throat> and now, uh, sorry, uh, more complex counting problems. So now example is, here in this example, maybe, maybe we are mixing, combining the product and the sum rule. I don't know when I, I have this thing coming into my mind when I prepared these slides, the, but we will see what is happening here. So that's why it is more complex counting problem. This is not only the thing that you can only go on with either with the product rule, either with the sum up rule. So now, so there are very easy examples available in the book. So I have just, uh, for example, here, taken those which can give you a little bit tough time. So anyhow, so this is a little bit example, which is, which I hope, which would be a mixture of product and the sum rule. So let's read it and then we have that idea. So example eight, 16 and this, the question is saying that, uh, yes, it is mentioned by the way, many complicated counting problems you can solve by using both of these rules. What are the rules? The product rule and the sum rule. So now, each user on a computer system has a password. So now you have to think something. So I have taken, other thing is that I have also taken those examples which are related to you, to your computer science. So, so I try to keep those uh, things here in this slide. So on a computer system, we can have the user account and each user on a computer system has a password. For example, you have the passwords if you want to use computers there. And that password is six to eight character long. Mm -hmm. Either you can create a password with length six or seven or eight. So, so, so from six to eight, you can create a password of this length and each character <clears throat> is a uppercase letter <laughs> and I'm feeling very much itching in my on in my throat. Anyhow, <clears throat> where each character is a uppercase letter, where each character is an uppercase letter or a digit. So in the password, you can use uppercase letters or digits. And each password must contain at least one digit. So this is the restriction now. Your password can have uppercase letters or digits and the password must have, must, this is the must condition, must have at, at least one digit in it. And the question is how many possible, how many possible passwords are there? Just a minute, I have, my pen is gone somewhere. Yes. So how many possible passwords are there? So the questions like that <laughs> will give you 
if you will not have the understanding for then these questions can give you the tough time because then you will not know how I can solve that. But now with this information or with these rules that we have seen, you will do these things quite easily. So one thing is now you know that your password length must be from six to eight characters. So password can have six length, can have seven length, can have eight length. So this is one thing. Your password can have uppercase letters or digits. My password can have uppercase and digits. And lowercase is not mentioned, just to make the question easy. Otherwise, it can make the question a little bit further lengthy, okay? So just to give a student that it is a question and you can just solve it and improve your skills. So that's why this is mentioned. Otherwise, you know that lowercase letters can also be used there. So in the exercises, you have that questions there. So uppercase and digits, and only one restriction is given to you that one digit, at least one digit. More than one digit is okay, but at least one digit should be there in the password. So if there, your password is containing only letters, this is not this is not what we, what we want. You have to subtract those things from your final calculation. So anyhow, for example, here, this P is what we are just taking a variable that this is the total number of possible passwords this P will have, will have. And how it will have that total number of password? By calculating password of length six, then by calculating password of length seven, by calculating password of length eight. So these are just variables, making equation to finally calculate something. So I will calculate password with length six and password total number of passwords with length seven and then eight, and then I will sum them up. And whatever the result that would be, that would be the total number of, total number of possible words. Now, to find P6, it is easier to find the number of strings of uppercase letters and the digits that are six, so in a password, what kind, what, so only P6, thinking for this P6. It is easier to find the number of strings of uppercase letters and digits that are six character longs, including those with no digits. So anyhow, look over here. Here, this 36 is what? 26 is the number of uppercase letters plus, plus 10 is the digits. It, would, it is becoming what? 36. So 36 and this 6 is the size. 36 raised power 6. 36 raised power 6. So you can say 36 plus 10, that is some rule. And you have made the 36. And then 36, and I'm saying that's 6. So this 36 raised power 6, whatever that total number you will get, that will have that will have the option of uppercase in it. Uppercase are there in this. Digits are also there in this. So here, to find the number of strings, uppercase and digits of six characters long, and including those with no digits, so here in this, is the 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 strings <clears throat> with totally uppercase letters are also the part of this one 
are also the part of this total number. And what is this 26 raised power 6? This 26 is the total number of alphabet letters. And I am saying raised power 6. So this would give me a number of strings of length 6 only containing letters. Only containing letters. This is what I don't want as a password. This is what I don't want as a password. So I am subtracting that number from this total number. From that total number. And then this 36 raised power 6 is the total number which contains password, total number of passwords of length six, in having numbers, having digits, having mixture of numbers and whatever, but also includes having password strings with only, with only up, uh, uppercase letters. It also includes all thing, all the combinations are there in this number. And from that number, I want to subtract those numbers. So that's why 26 a power 6, this is that number which I don't want in my password. This 26 raised power 6 is what? The strings with length 6 and only containing uppercase letters, no digits. So remove, I am just subtracting. So what is that number? That one. Rem subtract that from that one and you will have this thing as a P6, total number of passwords of length six. So this is here I also mentioned, subtract this from the number of strings with no digits. I also mentioned this. And this 36 is what I already explained, but it is also mentioned here. The number of strings of six characters is this one. And the number of strings with no digits is this one, which we have to subtract. And now P7 is what? 36 raised power 7. So it is containing strings with characters. Strings with digits, strings with combination of characters and digits, and also without digits, all are there. All combinations are there. And what I have to do, this 26 is the number of uppercase letters, raised power 7. This what I have to subtract it from here. I don't want that because my password must have at least one digit. So it means only uppercase letters, the only letters are not allowed. Due to this restriction, we are subtracting that thing. Due to this restriction, we are subtracting that thing. So, okay, calculate that and you will finally have that number after subtraction. Similarly, for P8, you have that number. And after then summing it, summing, now some up these numbers, these three numbers, what you have, sum it up. And this is not the long, even I cannot pronounce it. So, <laughs> so it's not easy for me to pronounce that one. So this is the total number of passwords you have according to that question, which will have the uppercase letters are digits, but they will not have the passwords with with only letters <clears throat> now for the subtraction rule if you have some task which you can perform in n one ways or n or the, the word is or, or and two ways. 
then the number of total number of ways to do that task by using this subtraction rule is like that you have to do something first you have to add them up n1 plus n2 and then you have to minus subtract something from that thing minus the common number of ways to do the task and then in both the number of ways n1 and n2 you have to search that what are the common things between both the ways and if you will found those common things you have to subtract or minus those common number of ways from that result this is called subtraction rule the other name for this is principle of inclusion exclusion and now we have the example <clears throat> example 18 how many bit strings of length 8 either start with 1 bit or end with 2 bits? So we have the bit strings and the length of bit string. Previously we saw maybe with the 4 bits, okay? And here we have 8, length 8. Bit string of length 8. It means one string can have eight bits. One string can have eight bits. So the first bit is one, other is two, four, eight, sixteen. Or uh, you can just one, one, two. 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. We have to go to, sorry, up to 8. 1 to 8. We have to go up to 1 to 8. Not 256, okay? So up to 8 bits, we have 1 to 8. So how many bit strings of length 8? So you have that 8 bit strings. And then how many are start with one bit? The starting is one. The, from the, from the left-hand side, starting bit is one. Or end with the two bits, zero, zero. When it is in end with, so on the right-hand side, you have the two bits. <clears throat> so the easy not easy way but for example you can write all those bits with eight bits all possibilities you can write it's it, it will not uh, take too much time anyhow so when when that eight bit string when that eight bit string on the left hand side when the first bit is one that is fixed that is fixed. How many bits are remaining? Seven. Seven positions are remaining. First bit is fixed, which is one. I can just write it here. First bit is fixed. Other are, it is what? A eight bits. So this, these are eight. First bit is fixed. And these all other positions are how many? Seven. So here I have two options. Here I have two, 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 two. But they have the combinations with each other. And then they have many options. So, so here I'm writing two raised power seven, which means that two is the possibility that you have on each bit. And seven is the total number of bits that you have here, remaining bits. So that is two raised power seven is equal to one, two, eight ways when the first bit is one. So this, so this is not final answer. You have just, you have just concluded one portion one part of the answers you have just concluded. That when this is fixed, then this is only one option. 
but here when i don't know it is for example here at each position there are two possibility and how many positions two raised power seven seven bits are remaining so one to eight number of ways we can fix some binary digit here and then the other thing is when you have this one the last two digits when you have these last two are fixed and all others and and how many bits are remaining here four five six think in that way think it calculate total first and then we will subtract what are the common because here we are taking it common here we are calculate we will subtract that thing so here this is now fixed these last two digits are fixed according to that question two bits and how there are six so two raised power six is equal to 64 ways for this thing for that thing for that thing and now when you have done this one and that one What is now common between them? So now this is fixed and that is fixed. What is remaining now? 1, 2, and 3, 5. So that is that 2 raised power 5 is 32. 32. 32. Because that is, you are doing that thing. You are calculating that thing here. And also again calculating it here. You have to subtract it. Understood? So, so that is that one. 2 raised power 5 is equal to 32. So now we are saying what? 1, 2 into 8, 64, and then subtracting this uh, minus 32, and then you will have 160 final answer. Total number of bit strings of length 8 that can start with 1 and that and can end with 0, 0. <coughs> uh, Yeah, let's see it. Division rule now. So, if there are n divided by d ways to do a task, if you want to do a task, and if there is, the, there is n divided by d ways, n is the total number of ways and d is something with which you are dividing what is that thing it is further elaborated here if there are n divided by d ways to do a task there are n divided by d ways to do a task if it can be carried out in n ways okay this n is the total number of ways to carry out that task and for every way and for every way, n ways, and, and we are taking only one way from it, and for every way w, exactly d of the n ways corresponds to the way w. Let's see what it is saying. Or you can just simply take that formula simply. If there are, there is a task which you can perform in n ways, then for this division rule, you can do what? You can divide that task of number of ways with some D, with some D. What would be that D? Let's see it here. But this is the formula. Just keep that thing in your mind that N divided by D would be something. How many different ways are there to seat four people around a circular table. You have a circular table and you have to give position on the seating, on the different seatings. You have to <laughs> uh, 
you have to give seatings to different four peoples or you have to uh, i don't want to say forcefully you have to, you have to plan something so that those four people can sit around that circular table so how many different ways are there for those four people to sit around a circular table where two seating are considered the same this is the condition where two seatings are considered the same when each person has the left neighbor and the right neighbor same for example if i am sitting and my left and right neighbor is again same so this is this is you don't have to repeat it should be unique it should be unique so as there are four people and four positions so four factorial is what 24 ways for the first person for the first person, there are four options are available, four seats. For the, when you will give that position. For the second person, three options will be. When that will take in the position, the third, uh, yes, you can say fourth. For the first person, four options. For the second person, three options. For the third person, two options. For the last person, one option. So what do you have to do? You have first, you have four options, multiplied by three options, multiplied by two options. This is what? Four factorial. So therefore, four factorial, there are, so if you will multiply them, you will have total 24 ways to order the given four people for these seats. So 24 is your N now. 24 is what? N. Your N now. And here, what is the what was the, what was the question? How many different ways are there to seat four people? Basically, this is your this this is your total number of ways to give seating to four people. But this is the total number of total number of, of options. But this is the restriction. When the left and the right neighbor is same, you don't have to, you have to, you have to, yeah, remove those things from there. And because there are four ways to choose the person for seat one, for seat one, when you are giving first seat, because there are four ways to choose the person when the seat one is empty and you have the fourth person, I can allow this person to sit on seat one. I can allow this person to seat one. I can allow. Now I'm thinking with respect to persons, not with respect to position. Position is only one. Seat is only one. So, so I can consider any person from these four persons. From these four fingers are from four, which I'm just showing you. So because there are four ways to choose the person for seat one, so then what? By the division, so we have to think four. Seat four people, okay? So that is the situation we have to consider. So that's why we are dividing that 24 with four. And then you will have finally six different seating arrangements for four people around the Circle, uh, circular table as your answer. Okay. Similarly, now tree diagram. These tree diagrams also can help you to compute something, to count something. And you know that what is a tree. And that thing that you are in the data structure, you know that a tree normally has the roots and the branches. This is definition of a tree, nothing else. This is the definition, the root and the branches, nothing else. And can have additional branches. So now the example is how many bit strings of length four? 
how many bit strings of length 4 do not have two consecutive ones. So you can draw, for example, here, 0, if 0 is coming. So this tree is drawn according to that, according to that arrival of the digits. So this, this is showing that 0, 0, 0, and this 0. So this string, this string, you can see on this diagram, here, we are not showing the other possibility. This is not a complete something binary tree, okay? If you will complete, if you will draw the complete tree for, for these four other, there are many strings of length four which are not mentioned here in this tree. Here, only those are mentioned which are accurate according to this example. How many bit strings of length 4 do not have two consecutive ones? So here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8. 8 bit strings of length 4 do not have the consecutive ones. So what the answer is basically you have to you can draw the complete tree first. You can draw the complete tree first. For example, here, for example, 0, 1, 2, 3 is not mentioned here. Okay. 3 is not mentioned here. So how we can mention it? What are the strings for the three? Uh, one. Zero and zero, like that. So here, one, and then when this one is here, and the zero, here you can draw that thing, okay? That branch. That branch for this thing. That branch is missed here. It is not missed here. We ignore that branch because we want to solve that question. We don't want to take that which which have the consecutive zeros. We ignore those things here. For example, 0, 0, 1 and then, okay, 0 is here. If it would be 1 again with the node 1, if it would be like that, then it would be equal to that 3. But here we, we have the consecutive ones. So that's why we didn't draw, we didn't draw that branch here. And this tree is helping me to compute or to, or to evaluate or to find the answer for that question. And here in that tree, I can see that this is one and then I, I, one is coming again and it is consecutive. So that's why I ignored it. I ignored it in my in my solution tree. But if you will draw the complete binary tree, those branches would be here. And then you can remove those branches and then you can have finally final answer that this is these are the branches without that consecutive ones. Anyhow, this is easy. And these are the examples that you have to do. So this is the end of section 6.1. And we will start section 6.2 next, inshallah, in the next class. Uh.